Hello and welcome back to my channel. Um, as you can see from the uh, title of the video, I'm going to be doing a um, plot tour today. Um, we are in sort of northwest Kent and um, we have two plots. So this one that I'm on, which is our original one that we've had for a year longer than our other one. Um, and then the other ones, you know, about I don't know six plots along. Um, so I'm going to start on this one because this one's got the most stuff on, and then the other ones sort of just got a few bits. So I'm going to start at the plot and work our way back. Um, I, I haven't um, had a little look round yet, so I don't know if there's any surprises waiting for me or anything that's uh, dead. Uh, I haven't been down. We had some rain in the week, so I didn't have to come and water um, the plot. Um, and we're trying not to water the tomatoes and stuff as regularly. Uh, last year we used to water them practically every day. Um, but here in Kent, and I think it might be for the whole of the southeast, um, we have a hosepipe ban that started a couple of weeks ago. So trying to water two full plots with a watering can just takes forever like even with the hose it used to take me an hour hour and a half to do it all um so yeah I'll, we don't have that sort of time and it's quite a lot of work um so we've decided to try not to water as much um because i did read or heard that some people you know they only water once a week and actually someone that i work with she said she, once they're in the ground she doesn't water them at all so i was like hmm why are we watering them every day so maybe we might actually get a better crop so you know we're having to do it through so we're sort of forced into it really um but yeah it seems to be working so far because when i've come down and i've looked at the stuff it's like oh it's all right actually it, it's not too i've had a quick look in the polytunnel on our other plot um and the stuff in there it's not wilting or anything and that was last watered probably nearly a week ago now so you know it does work so we'll give it a go and we'll see that's all we can do isn't it so let me turn the um, camera around and show you what we have going on so on this bed here as we first come in uh, there is some purple sprouting broccoli growing in there it is looking quite good which I'm pleased with um, oh can't see I need to um, do a little bit of weeding in there so that's a job for today and then on the bed behind, this is our new no dig bed, so it's not very deep. Um, frustratingly, there are weeds coming through, even though there's like um, cardboard, but they still find a way. Um, but there's less than what there normally is. So along here, we've got some Jackby Littles, and I think these are Harlequin ones that are sort of struggling a little bit, but they were struggling when I put them out. Uh, and then we've got a mixture of different squashes and pumpkins. I think we've got some jack of all trades. I think this is crown prince down here. Uh, and I'd have to look at the labels for the others because I can't actually remember. Let's have a little look what we've got. Um, oh, this is a, so there's some patty pans in there as well. That honey boat squash. But they're all starting, they look all right and they're starting to. Um, sort of spread a bit which is good got some flowers but I'm, I don't think they'll do anything just yet um so this bed as I say is a no dig bed it had um cardboard and then um some duck bedding not from we haven't got ducks but from another plot holder um and then it's got like some manure which is this country nature natural manure um it's got all of that on there uh, so the idea is that these Jackby Littles grow over the arch to here and then we've got some other Jackby Littles on the other side to, to meet them. Uh, these two at the front are uh, sort of um, patty pans. These are just some spares that we haven't got anywhere to put yet so we've just left them there, you know, keeping them alive just about for now. Um, it was to see if everything that we planted out took um, and we might have a bed spare on the other bed um, on the other plot that we can plop them in uh, we've got some nasturtiums just going here and then this is the scarlet kale which is looking lovely I'm just going to head back this way 
Uh, it's an apple tree. It doesn't have that many apples on it this year, but it's got a few. Last year it had loads, but this year it's not got as many. And then we've got this other large bed. This is another new no dig bed. Um, I need to fill that hole up. It's not going to do much good, is it? But again, everything looks good, but it means I can actually put the camera through and you might be able to have a little look. So this is a mixture of brassicas. So this has got, um, well, that's got some damage on it. I don't know what's eating that. I'll have a look at it in a minute, see if that's any caterpillars and if it is and take them off. I would have thought if it's caterpillars, a whole lot would have been eaten though. Um, we've got a mixture of um, cabbages, broccoli, um, what else we've got? Brussels sprouts, up the, right up the back there. I'm not sure if you can see, we've got some kaolettes. Um, we've got some savoy cabbage some kale I think there's a few kohlrabi that got put in there so it's a bit a bit of everything bed um, and that's not necessarily through choice <laughs> that's because we didn't label stuff properly and we don't know what it is so you know it'll, it's, it'll be fine in there together and it'll be a surprise when it when it all grows um, I know the kaolettes because they were labelled, but some of the other stuff I'm not too sure. Brussels sprouts I can tell because they have slightly different leaves. Um, right, we're going to head back here. We've got um, a couple of plum trees here. They were here when we took the plot on, but there's lots of plums growing. I think one might be a Victoria plum. There's one's like a real, real purple plum and then one's like a greeny purple plum. Um, so I think they are two different types of plums. Right, here we've got some garlic. Now, I did pull, it's starting to get a bit of rust on there actually. Um, I did pull a couple out because the leaves have gone really spirally, which is a sign of, um, is it allium leaf minor or leaf allium minor allium? Wow, well, it's them three words, but I don't know what order they're going. <laughs> um, so I pulled them out. This also needs a bit of weeding. I did weed it the other day, but they just keep, you know, growing back. This is um, some chard. So there and there. And then these were some, um, bro um, what are they called? Beetroot. And in the pot, they looked amazing. And then I put them out and they don't look so amazing. So we have started some more off, but that was a shame because, yeah, we haven't had any beetroot grown quite well but the, the chard is looking good and then over here do you know what i weeded all this the other day so i was thinking oh, i'll be all right when i do a tour but it's all literally grown back within like a week um but this was some beetroot as well planted out at the same time as the other one stuck some uh, um giant sunflowers at the back they seem to be doing really well this one in particular is growing really tall um, and then I've got some shallots here that were put in quite late because I, I picked them up at the garden centre for like 50p and thought, oh, do you know what? I'm just going to shove them in. You know, so we'll shove them in, see what happens. Uh, then we've got some Cavalier Neuro Kale here, um, which seems to be doing all right. I took a chance putting it out without being um, netted and I find that kale tends to be all right. They don't tend to, the butterflies don't tend to like it as much. Uh, and then we've got some dwarf French beans. So we have actually got some purple um, dwarf ones. They are, uh, what's the name of them? Let's have a look. What's that say? I don't know what that even says. Mystic? Mystic, I think. Um, but yes, yeah, so I've got some purple ones on there. So that'd be nice. And then these are... Um, Dwarf French beans as well. These are the green ones though. These are Can Canadian Wonder. And there are some on there. So that's good. This is another brassica bed. Again, it's a bit of a mixture of um, all year round cauliflower and some broccoli. And then I stuck a couple of kale in there as well. The, the um, scarlet one in between just to um, try and have some under the netting so if the other stuff did get eaten then I've got some um, but that's looking really good as well and then at the back of this little bed I've just got some more sunflowers so they're the giant ones at the back and then the, I think they're called toy shop um, ones at the front this has just got some spare beans in so the ones that didn't fit 
uh, where we've got our other beans and um, some bolotti beans that only two of them I think took so they've just been shoved in here and I've just noticed there is actually a, uh, a bolotti bean on there so that won't feed four of us would it but never mind this is some um, golden beetroot that was sown later than them other ones um, but that's looking quite good actually this bed here is another new one um, it's another no, no dig one and I think this netting needs to come off because the kohlrabi oh and look it didn't do much good did it goodness sake there's two of them in there <sighs> three right you lot can come out let's get them out they are not what you want on your brassicas because they lay eggs and I can't see it at the moment. And then, which hatch into ooh, um, caterpillars and they eat the lot. I was hoping that once I took the netting off, I wouldn't have to net this. I thought we were gonna be safe, but I'm gonna have to get some of that blue netting. I don't like that blue netting, it looks horrible, but it does do the job. So as I was saying, in here we've got some kohlrabi. It's just starting to fatten out. But again, this is a no dig bed. Why do we have a load of weeds coming up? That's we're not supposed to. Um, and we've got some Cavanuro kale in here. I am going to check all of this in a minute, um, just to check for any caterpillars because I'd rather get them while I can. What is that? Dead fly. Lovely. Um, but the kohlrabi is starting to swell, so it's starting to get its funny little things on there this is i think it's purple delicacy this one i'm gonna leave the netting off because um obviously it wasn't doing anything and uh, all i was doing was trapping them in there so hopefully this way they won't get trapped in there this bed here is actually our, our raspberry bed but um it's more like a, just a wild meadow now um i think what we're going to do is over the winter is actually either dig all the raspberries up put some kind of weed membrane down and plant into the weed membrane um, to try and prevent this because the thing is the ground is so hard it's so difficult to weed in between the raspberries so I think that's a job for this winter um, and if not we might we're still going to dig them up I think and um, buy some more raspberries because yeah this is just a bit ridiculous now I can't even see any raspberries in there I can see one at the front here, but that's about it. <laughs> we have got some raspberries in here, though, which they're not supposed to be. They've sort of um, spread in there, and I've just noticed some nice, juicy... Are they even raspberry? A different type of raspberries to all the others. They've got, like, bigger like bits on it. But, yeah, there's some raspberries in there, and um, the rest of it is just weeds. So... Uh, we were going to do some, um, we did have some sugar snap peas, but they're all finished now. Uh, but we're keeping it like this. We can't, although it's netted, I can't, I don't want to put any brassicas in there because it had kaolettes and Brussels sprouts in last year. So what we might do, we've got some more um, peas growing. I might sow some more peas and literally just fill this with peas, uh, which don't necessarily need to be netted, but I net them because the pigeons are rather partial to a pea plant um, and they like to eat the plants before they've even grown that big so might do that in here and then I've just got these trees here this one's a pear tree which I don't think we've ever got any pears off but we have quite a lot of pears on it this year and this apple tree has loads of apples on so although the one at the front hasn't got many apples on this one has and we have got another apple tree that's just behind the um, greenhouse that we've never had any apples off either before so it actually pays to have a couple of apple trees so when you have ones that do really well um, or when you have ones that don't do so well then hopefully you've got some that do really well um, right let me turn this back around again so we just have some random pots with tomatoes in. I think these are all tumbling Tom yeah, these are all tumbling tom tomatoes. So we tend to just leave them to get on with it. Um, and you get lots of nice little cherry tomatoes on there. And then we've got another one over here. Um, some spares that are just sitting waiting for something to happen to them. 
There's the pears again and the apples. We don't know what variety, oh, I think these are conference pears because you can tell by the shape of the apples. I don't know what variety they are because as I say, they were all here when we got here. But I think this one is a eating apple. Uh, right, then we've got the greenhouse here. Here, I've just got some flowers. I think, I did have some calendula in there, but not really doing anything. I've got one sort of tumbling tom that was just, you know, stuck there because we had some we get to that point where it's just like just stick them anywhere and then i've got some of these um sunflowers that are the little ones toy shop ones i've got this really good gherkin plants i've already had i think about four gherkins off i'll even get a little bit bigger um but they've we've had quite a few oh look there's another one there um and there's that quite a few so, yeah, they just say cucumber, gherkin variety. But yeah, quite a few on this one there. So I started to grow the gherkins because my daughter loves pickled gherkins. So the idea was to grow some and pickle them. What I didn't really realise was how you pickled them. And I thought you just sort of put them in some vinegar or something, but turns out you don't you need like all these different things so we've just been eating them um like cucumbers really um i just slice them up i have peeled them because they're quite spiky um slice them up and add them to a salad uh, and it's been quite good as an early sort of cucumber for us so that's what i've been doing um rather than pickling them but maybe i'll i just haven't had time really either to sort it out right let's get back to the greenhouse so when I said earlier that everything seems to look all right, the only thing that seems to struggle is these tomatoes here. Whenever I come down, they look a bit limp. So they're the only thing that I've had to sort of water any more than anything else. I'm not sure why. I don't know if the soil is different to everything else. You know, you've got these ones here in a pot and they're absolutely fine. We've got some uh, lettuce here, which is supposed to be some kind of like romaine lettuce, but I've just been picking it like this and eating it like this. I wanted to leave some to get like, this one looks like it's going to go a bit more remain, like padding out a bit, but the rest I've just been eating like that. Got some chilies here. These are hot chili shake, these three here. Um, I think these are probably, I uh, can't remember, but they're chilies anyway. I think they might be cayenne chilies. I've got some, that's not spinach, that's the other side. These are zinnias that I've, I potted on the other day to go in the garden. I started off some climbing French beans, but they haven't done anything. Um, and also some more here. They haven't done anything either. I don't know why, they're, they're tucking them all in, they're all poking out. Um, and then this is, I just stuck, I found some cucumber seeds. They're called Chinese. Lane. Oh, I can't read that. Um, but I thought, you know what? Stick them in, see what happens. And then I found some other cucumber seeds again, stuck them in, see what happens. But they haven't done anything yet. Um, these are cucumelons that I potted on the other day. They, they were looking a bit sad. Well, they still look a bit sad, but hopefully they'll pick up a bit. These are these are peas that we sowed before the ones over there. Um, and these are cannellini beans. So these are doing really well. Um, and these cannellini beans actually need planting out and I think I know where I'm going to put them and the peas will go in that arch that I showed you earlier. And then over here I've just got some dahlias that I grew from seed. I don't expect them to do much this year to be honest, I'm just going to keep putting them on onto bigger pots um, and then hopefully, I assume then what they do is they leave a tuber and then I can dig them up and save them but I'm not a dahlia expert. And then I've got a couple of hollyhocks, or not a couple, a few hollyhocks here. Again, not necessarily for this year, but um, for next year, because they're a perennial and they'll keep coming back. This bed here had our really, really good peas in, but I've picked them all, I've just, and then I've just sort of left it all to sort of break down into the soil. Um, we've got some tomatoes along here. This again was one of our, right, where are we gonna put them? Right, just stick them in there, but actually, they're doing all right um, they're a mixture of all different ones um, and then there's a little tumbling tom that again stick it in there uh, got a bit of um, chamomile down there 
don't know whether you can grow these things together but we just stick them in now um, and a couple of um, sunflowers that needed potting out so I've put one there and one up there why not and then in this bed we have got um, some sorry I'm just watching there's just a load of butterflies all just took off uh, some runner beans uh, which are growing quite well and then we've got some more runner beans this side these were started a bit later than these ones and then I've just got a couple of marrows oh I've just spotted one I think they're marrows or are they courgettes I think these ones were marrows but I had to I had nowhere to put so I just stuck in so I put one over there and one over here let's have a look yes they are marrows so that's exciting we've never had a marrow before they've never worked that's what I was looking at, these butterflies. I don't know which one, they're not cabbage whites, are they? I think because they're more yellowy. I'm not sure which them ones are, but they seem to like them flowers. Um, these are broad beans, which I'm going to pick today. So we've got some that are really good. And then back there, we've got some that have got hardly anything on. So that's why they did get attacked by a black fly. Um, but I was on the understanding that actually it doesn't cause any problem to your beans but so we're going to pick these this is where I'm probably going to put the cannellini beans in here um, afterwards and something else I'm not sure what I'm going to put in there yet but that will give us uh, oh look this, see, this is the thing right so we, it had a load of black flies on as I said like aphids these oh let's get out of my shadow these little beauties are baby ladybirds and they feed on the aphids and there are loads so okay we had a load of aphids but we've fed the ladybirds so that's that's good yeah i don't think i've seen so many baby ladybirds i'm sure there's a proper technical name for them but i don't know um on here before uh, so that you know that's good. So now I'm thinking maybe I won't pull them out just yet because I'm giving them food. So maybe we'll leave them for a bit, do our bit for the environment. We've got our potatoes over there. Uh, there's, they go all the way along down the side there. They're all in pots, 30 litre pots. Uh, I'm not sure how good they're gonna be because they're due to come out, but they haven't flowered. So I'm not sure, we'll see. And what we tried to do was do it as a sort of Instead of putting loads of soil in, we put um, grass cuttings. I'm not sure if that was the right thing to do because the grass cuttings... The grass cuttings um, obviously just went down and didn't give any height for the potatoes to grow in. I think we should have possibly used sort of hay or straw. Uh, straw probably because that wouldn't have gone down as low. But, you know, you live and learn got some uh, nice gooseberries which I've been picking every time I come to try them um, and they were disgusting but now I had one the other day and they were actually quite nice so I'm going to pick some of them and I'm going to make a gooseberry crumble and then I've got a um, tayberry bush here actually I'm not sure if that's part of the tayberry that's spread or if that's something completely different but this is the tayberry here uh, I only put it in last year so I've not had anything from it yet uh, but maybe we might get something this year. This is that other apple tree that I was saying that we've never had any apples off, but we've actually there's quite a few on there and they look really good. Um, so I'm not sure if they're going to be eating or cooking, but when they get a bit bigger, we'll try them and see what they're like. This is a cherry tree. Can you see the cherries up there? We don't normally pick them because, well, they're too high. I can't get to them. So we usually just leave them for the birds. If there's any low ones, we pick them, but they always tend to be high up. Although I have just spotted some low ones over here that I can reach. Oh, so I'm going to pick them. And I'm going to try that. Not quite ripe. Maybe that's why they're still there and the birds haven't eaten them. Because um, we've on the other plot, which I'll show you in a minute, we've got another cherry tree that's like a sour cherry tree. You, you couldn't just eat them, they're too sour, um, and the birds don't bother with them. Um, I think they know that they're not quite as nice to eat like that, so um, we tend to cook them ones, um, and they do all right. Um, someone commented on a video 
um, the other week about seeing my goji berry bushes. And I said I'd show them in the tour. I should have said don't get too excited about them um, because they just look like a bit of like twigs. But I do need to move them because they. I'm going to move. I'm going to repot them because they've got a lot of grass growing in them. Um, but they're still alive. Um, but I did read that you don't get anything for about three years on them. So I'm pleased they're still alive. So that's good. And then I need to move them. They like prefer like 100% sun. So where they are at the moment, like now they're in the shade. So I'm going to move them, put them on and move them. But let me show you because I've also got honey berries as well, which I did get some honey berries off this year. What I didn't realise was, but was good, um, they come earlier on in the season so they come before the strawberries came before the raspberries before my blueberries so it prolongs and this is why I had different berries um, it prolongs your sort of berry season really so you could be eating them I didn't get loads because they are quite new plants they were only put in last year I'm surprised I got any to be honest um, but again I need to pot them on because they've got a lot of grass growing in the pots even though it's all grown from compost uh, and I'll show you why there's a lot of grass growing in there. So these are the pots and this is my next door neighbour's plot. So obviously they don't, well not obviously, but they don't use this back bit, they only use the front bit. So all the grass grows, it creates seeds and then it, it falls into the, my pots. So again, I'm going to move them somewhere where that shouldn't happen so much. But this is a goji berry. This one here. So let's get that bit of honey berry out of the way. So as I say, you know, and this grass does not just pull out easily. I need to, like if I pull it, the whole thing comes out. I think I've got a bit of tree growing in there as well. Um, so yeah, I need to give them a bit of love. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the goji berry, that's one of them. This is another one over here. Uh, and then I've got another one. I think the other one did die actually, is that one. And then these are honey berries. And there is a little honey berry left on there. I've seen this one. Um, yeah. So that is the um, honey berries and goji berries. So as I say, they are still alive, two of them. But I just need to give them a little bit of love. They've sort of just been left to get on with it. Um, now we've planted everything else out, I can sort them out. And here we've got a few more potatoes. Again, they just don't, they're not as tall as what they have been in the past. So I'm not sure how many potatoes we're actually going to get off of there. But hopefully we'll get some anyway. Hello, this is future Amy. Um, I was just editing this video. Um, and I had both plots together, but it makes it a very long video. So what I've done is I've cut the second plot out of this video. And I'll do it as a two-parter and I'll upload the other one. Um, tomorrow um, so I just wanted to end the video here for this one so I hope you enjoyed um, our plot one tour which is our original plot and come back tomorrow for um, our second plot bye